Oh, good. Hi, guys. Welcome to Parrot Playhouse. You want to say hi, Jess? You want to say hi? Yeah? It's so noisy in here. It's noisy, huh? Okay, so Jess is going to, like, take over for a bit. I got to go grab Thomas because he's screaming. Do you hear that? He's, like, really loud because it's nesting season. This is what birds do. This time of year, they scream and they bite. Yeah. So, okay, let's hand this over to Jess. I'll be right back. Here is Loudmouth Bueno. There he is. You see, he has. Did you see his picture that he had? Look at his beak. That's sweet potatoes. Hi, guys. Oh, my goodness. Have we had a day? Bueno. We have had a day. Hi, Michael. Hi, Chanel. Eliza. Bungie. No, Jess, come back over here. Ow! I just got bit. Okay, nope. Okay, Thomas is like, he sees Jesse, so that's like displaced aggression. It like, well, he's scared. I think mostly he's scared. I actually don't think that's like hormonal or anything else or jealousy. He's just scared of, you, you know, their birds, so he tries to act tough. Yeah? What you doing, Jess? Which way? Are you gonna choose? I gave. Oh, it was like a battleship just blew up. He's blowing up battleships. Do you want this? Do you want some wood? <laughs> I love you. I love you. Do you want some solar chips? Wanna try those? I have stuff. So, oh my gosh, it's gonna be bueno. It's gonna be so loud in here today. Like it's just crazy. Oh, good. Beer gets here. Oh my gosh. So, should a time change in Austria? I don't know if it's like earlier or later in the morning. Oh my gosh. Like, are you guys like, is, does your house sound like this too? Like, cause I mean, I've got a bunch of birds. So it's just like, whoa. And it literally happened with the time change because spring was here. Oh, Abigail's here, the bird lover. Hey, I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for moderating. I think we're going to need it today <laughs> by some comments I've been getting on my other videos. I think I'm going to need you guys more than ever today. <laughs> the breeders are angry at me. <laughs> breeders don't like me. They've been attacking my channel lately. It just tells me I'm doing something right, right? Uh, Vanessa's bird studio is here. Hi. Uh, Zing Bobbly is here. Hello, hello. Oh, well, it's so good to have all of you here. It really is. It really is. Certified True Tav is here. Hey, hello. Nice to see you. So hopefully it's 745 where you are, Abigail. And Eliza, I love your channel. Thank you so much. Michael, it's 9 o'clock there. Thankfully, all my birds are in bed and I can watch the peace. Watch in peace? Are you kidding me? This place is crazy. You left. You probably put your birds to sleep and now you're in my chaos. It's like nuts in here. Okay, hold on. I'm still wearing the neck brace. Come here, Victoria. Come here, Victoria. She's like right here. <laughs> There's birds everywhere. <laughs> oh, uh, budgie banter. It's 1.46 a.m. here. Where are you? Are you in Australia? And Kaluka's here. Uh, Chanel, everybody's saying their time. Chanel Torres, 8.46. I'm honored that you guys are staying up so late. Doris is here, or so early, uh, or waking up, setting your alarms to watch this. That's like so cool. Linda Parrott's here, Sherry Weaver's here. Uh, uh, Jesse just sunk another battleship right there. Man, Quinn has been, so he's a wild parrot, he's back there. And so the problem is, this time of day is when birds scream anyways, but the wild parrots fly over, which is really sad, and he hears them, and so he's doing contact calls. 
but do the neighbors understand that? I don't know. You know, that is what the neighbors do not like. And normally I can get him to not do it, but because I'm like talking and I'm pretty animated right now, he's feeding off the excitement. So he's going to do it. And he's going to do it some more. And he's going to do it some more. Um, Jancy Pep Card is here. Lovely, so cute. Hope you are keeping safe. We are. We are. Isabel is here. Hello. Love from Canada. Yay, that's great. And then the Galax Tiger is here. Hi, guys. Okay, let me see if I can get Quinn over here. The problem is, are you going to scream too? Why don't you go over here? Let's go check out Quinn. I'm going to put you right here, Thomas. Okay, where you feel safe. So I'm going to put Thomas below. And let me go get loudmouth Quinn. Let me go get him. Do you want to come and say hi? Come here. Step up. Good. That was a good step up. Yeah, that was really nice, actually. Yeah. That was a very nice step up. Oh, um, so Jesse just made that rude sound. I did not. Did you just make a rude sound? And of course he's going to sit like that. What? What's wrong? What's wrong with the queen? Huh? You okay? I see you. Yeah. Well, we have gotten off to a wild start, as I knew we would, because of the time of year. You don't see too many YouTubers doing uh, regular lives with this many parrots this time of year. Probably for a reason, right? Hey, Mikio's here. Please, no more than three emojis. YouTube will quit the live. They will. Yeah, if you guys, I love emojis. But if you can kind of hold back, no more than three. Thank you, Abigail, because they will shut us down. Because that's what they, they, they look at as, as spam. So, okay, so everybody, who, who has birds that are biting them right now? I, I've been bit. Um, baby and puppy, you know, they're always, they're, they're really hormonal right now. And so what I've done is, I have loaded their cages with toys. I loaded the cages with toys. And so as you can see, they have all kinds of foraging toys over there. And I've hidden treats in the toys that I've put inside their cages and even outside their cages. And I like to put toys in the outside of their cages sometimes because they like to pull them in. It gives them like an extra obstacle and sometimes there's those um, metal toys where you put treats inside and uh, your kayak's hormonal now, hormonal now. I bet your kayak is hormonal. I had two kayaks trying to attack me yesterday. The same time. At the same time. Thank you, Mikio. Yeah, hold back on the emojis, guys. No more than three emojis. That's what the moderators are trying to say. YouTube will stop this live stream. Um, and so it's just really tough. So what I'm doing is it's so important that you really weigh your birds right now more than ever. I know I, I sound like a broken record. I say this all the time. Um, why not more than three emojis, Bungie Banter? Because that's the YouTube's rule. They like put that rule into place like over a year ago and they actually started deleting channels during live streams, like big channels. And they were um, punishing us for too many emojis. They look at it as spam. And there's YouTube bots that come on here and they kind of watch us, what we're doing. They have to monitor and they're, they're, they're like robots, basically. So when that happens, the robot's going, ooh, you know, it, it doesn't quite know, but it feels that it's spam, something not good. And so they just take you down. So they're just trying to keep things clean. But um, so that's what worries them. Okay, so that's what's going on. But so this is when you have to weigh your birds more than ever, you guys. Because right now is when your birds are really under stress and their immune system is compromised. Because in the wild, they would be flying. Yeah, my neck is fine. In the wild, they would, thank you for asking. In the wild, they, they should be flying, getting their energy out, right? 
and woo, yeah, there's a ferret like escaping. And sadly, you know, a lot of them don't get a fly and they're in these bird rooms and they were never designed to be in our homes, but they're here. And so we got to take care of them. And so they're feeling really stressed out. It's like having a, a three-year-old with a lot of energy and sticking that three-year-old kind of in a cage, right? Sticking that three-year-old in a very small area like this. The kid's going to go crazy, right? It's just going to go crazy. And that's why it's so important that we give them things to do like foraging. And we also um, want to not give them too much fat. So we really want to watch their food. That's why I was saying weighing is important. You want to make sure that they're staying at a good weight, that your avian veterinarian or your exotic veterinarian or your veterinarian um, says is good for your parrot. Whoa. You, oh. oh, I can't turn my neck. Okay, there we go. Okay, whoa. Okay, there we go. There we go. And so once you've established that weight, Try to keep your bird at that weight if you can. Now, if you have a female parrot, especially a cockatoo, this is where you really got to watch things. So if you're not feeding your bird any extra and all of a sudden you see all this weight happen, there's a good chance that your bird has an egg inside of her and she's about to lay an egg. So that is like a major red flag. And it makes you, it's like prepares you to start, you know, preparing for that and really watching her, making sure that she's not like egg bound, uh, making sure that she's eating and pooping, making sure that her poops don't have a bad smell to them. Um, a lot of female cockatoos, cockatiels, sun conures, African greys. Thomas, watch your language, please. Um, sorry guys, he, he says the bad word, a big bad word sometimes, so I apologize for that. I, I do, we're working on it. We're doing our best here. Um, what was I going to say? Like every time he says that word, my brain just goes uh, like scrambled eggs. But so it's really important that you watch that because if they get egg bound, it's a real problem. It's, it's a huge problem. So you want to make sure they're eating, they're pooping. And birds, when they're not feeling good, especially this time of year, they will fake you out. They will fake eat. And because they want to look like they're well, because they're trying to hide their illnesses. And so they will fake eat. They'll, they'll do the head motion like they're eating. If you're feeding them seeds, they'll, they'll like just kind of grab the shells. Hopefully you're not giving your birds seeds. Um, but more, more pellets and uh, vegetables and less fruit this time of year. And so that's why weighing is so important to do that. But if you got a bird that's just losing a ton of weight, then that's also a red flag. So a scale, it's like 20 bucks. We have them at our Amazon store. They're a lifesaver. They're an absolute lifesaver because by the time you find out that there is something wrong with your bird, because these guys hide their illnesses and bueno, and it's, where did Victoria go? Hold on. Oh, she's on my knee. <laughs> But it, it's like impossible. If you look at them, you can't tell if they're skinny or not, or if they're losing weight. You know, a lot of birds, they look, you, you can't tell if they're losing a bunch of weight. You can't really tell if they're gaining a bunch of weight. You know, they just look fluffed like that, right? And so you got to feel their keel. And you want to make sure there's nothing changing in that as well. What's wrong, princess? What's wrong? So those are things to look for. Um, when you've got uh, this time of year for sure. And then the sleep, like I always say, I know I sound like a broken record, but it's so important. This is where your birds need the 12 hours and my birds should definitely be going to sleep real soon. Um, like in another 30 minutes because it is gonna play. Because sleep is important. It's like having a toddler with not enough sleep, they're gonna go crazy. And these guys need plenty of sleep to rest oh, and when they're awake it gives them excuse it makes their body feel like oh I have time to produce I, I want to nest I want to mate you know I want to keep eating and so you got to shut that down and black everything out in the room and it's best if they have their own room if you can because you know even the TV on people going in and out the bird really can't sleep um, what time is it at your place it's it's probably like um, almost six o'clock. So normally I'd put my birds to bed at six, 
but we're they're going to stay up till 6 30 because of today and then i'm hoping you see jesse's playing with wood i always make sure that i have like plenty of wood plenty of things for my birds to do and they just stay busy like this um certified tree what can i do if my birds won't eat anything but seeds and i have three birds only two of them uh, birds will uh, let them touch me so or uh, let, let let me touch the oh, oh oh my god sorry my brain my neck um so what i would do is if you can get the stainless steel kebabs um they work great because you can pile a bunch of fruits and vegetables on this and they'll look at it as a toy and you can sprinkle some millet i don't know what kind of birds you have but you can sprinkle some millet on uh, the outside and they will go for the millet or they'll go for the seed and they will take bites of the fruits and the vegetables and that'll teach them that oh this tastes good right and so that's what I usually use that's what I usually use um oh no no I'm answering uh, oh no uh, Gabby I, I'm answering your question no problem so that's what I would do or what you can also do is if you have pellets, oh, Thomas just threw for me. If you've got pellets, you can grind them in a coffee free uh, coffee grinder, get them really powdery and then sprinkle it on top of um, uh, the seed as well. And so you might wanna just lightly mist the seed and make sure if you do mist it with a spray bottle, spray bottles actually get slimy like every three days. And so you want to make sure that it's clean uh, um, and make sure it's not out of the tap because it's going in their mouths or just dribble some water like that and put the seed on top and they will also go for it. But you can't let it sit out too long. Is it okay to add apple cider vinegar to the spray uh, for the shower? No, um, definitely don't because if that apple cider vinegar gets in their eyes, it'll burn or if they have a cut, it'll burn um, their skin is really sensitive and you definitely don't want to irritate their skin because it could start them like mutilating. You know, it's like us, if we have like a little cut and we pour apple cider vinegar on it, it's going to burn so bad. So definitely leave the apple cider vinegar um, for the water, Just putting a few drops. I showed you, I think it was a few streams ago of uh, raw apple cider vinegar in their water. And that really helps with bacteria, especially this time of year when your parrots are holding their coops more than ever because nesting season birds, a lot of birds will sit at the bottom of the cage because they think they're sitting on a nest and they'll hold their poops. And what happens is bacteria forms, there's Quinn, in the cloaca. And that can cause all kinds of infections that need antibiotics. So. Okay, my orange wing, Amazon likes uh, fruit, food, fruits, and veggies. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is an awesome idea about grinding the pellets. Yeah, I have a video on how to convert your birds um, from seed to pellets. And that was one of the tricks that I did in there. There was a bunch of them. It's pretty good. If you Google Parrot Playhouse, how to convert your birds from seeds to pellets, uh, it's really good. It's super educational. I try to make it entertaining, try to make it short. And I think it's it's been really helpful. I got a lot of positive feedback on that video. So, yeah, can you give them what you eat? You know, I, I mean, I eat pretty healthy, um, but I, well, let me show you what they what they have today. It's cooling still. So this is um, actually, it's Bird Street Bistro, and it has quinoa and cinnamon and all kinds of yummy stuff in it, but it also, I put sweet potato in there, I put some peas, um, I added some grains in there as well, and when I served it to them, I made sure it was cool, because that's another thing this time of year, you don't want to serve them hot food because it makes them feel like it's formula and that makes them want to nest even more. So I gave them all a little bit of that and then I sprinkled um, some pellet powder on top of it 
as well. So I, I mean, I tr don't really give them too much of my food because I don't want them. I mean, some of it might be salty, even though I eat pretty healthy. You know, what might be a little bite to us of like a chip or, you, you know, uh, people sometimes give their birds pieces of pizza. Even if it's small, that is huge for a little body like that. And I, you know, I saw a YouTuber feeding her birds a pork and beans and tuna. And it was during the Texas um, crisis. But that was like the second day of uh, the no power. And so that was kind of a little uh, worrisome because, I, I mean, uh, pork and beans out of a can has a, a lot of salt, right? And tuna uh, out of a can, well, it's meat. Uh, birds really, they don't need meat. Um, that's a lot of salt too. So, you know, I definitely, I try to keep, oh, he's going to bite me. I try to keep it my birds mostly on fresh vegetables and at night i cook them a little bit i blanch them so i'll grab a bunch of vegetables i'll get boiling water and i can put cinnamon in there i can put um don't use nutmeg because nutmeg is actually toxic for parrots it it affects their heart and their blood so don't use nutmeg um you can use curry that does not have nutmeg and if you use cinnamon, make sure it's Ceylon cinnamon because the cheap cinnamon actually has metals in it that can really hurt your parrots, make them sick. So I'll put stuff in the water and then I'll put the vegetables in for like a minute and I'll pull them out. And so they still have a lot of nutrition and they still have a little crunch and they're so delicious and they just love them. And I'll sprinkle a little quinoa on top and they love it. It's really easy to do. So if you're going to be cooking for yourself and doing vegetables, just put some in a separate pot with no salt, no nothing, just water and some safe spices, a uh, dill, and, you know, do that. And it's just, it's so nice. And it, you'll be so glad because when we feed our birds uh, one French fry at a time, or they sit down with us and have oatmeal and they, they're getting our butter, they're getting our sugar, you know, all that stuff, it really adds up. And... I see a lot of birds in rescue, sorry Thomas, um, with fatty liver disease and uh, heart disease. And that's actually what I already had two of my birds, one fatty liver, one heart disease, they died of. And when Casey's, many of you saw, I filmed my last 30 hours with her. It was really horrible. Uh, but I felt it was important to share that with you so you could see what uh, heart disease does. Um, it was because she was fed you know, junk food for 15 years, just 15 years. That's all it took. So, and when she came here, I fed her healthy food. And then Bayliana, oh my God, I miss her, my Kaik. Um, she was a little pistol, you guys. She was something else. I, I, everybody loved her. But, you know, she was old, and but she had fatty liver disease. And, you know, something's going to get them when they get in there. Like, she was like 26. Eventually, something is going to get them. Because kayaks, they can 26 to 30 years. Although I, somebody told me theirs lived to be 40. I don't know. But the average, if you're doing good with the kayak to reach 26 to 30, like really good. Because usually what kills them, it's not their diet. It's they get stepped on or something kills them because they're, they attack things all the time. So they'll attack a dog, even though you got the nice family dog. The dog's gonna defend itself, catches the dog off guard, and boom, gone, or a kid steps on it. I mean, kayaks get killed in the house all the time uh, because they are so fast, they are so aggressive sometimes, and things happen, they get um, caught up in the door when you shut the door, I've heard that too, so. Yeah, that's what usually takes a kayak. So yeah, so it's a miracle if they survive to be like 26, sadly. Um, so that's why I'm all, yeah, that's why I'm always warning people about their kayaks. It's they're a huge responsibility. They're just they're they're wild. Uh, ow, ow. Okay, Daniel Perez. Parrots. Oh, he's gonna bite me. Parrots should not have cereal. Um, they such have fruits and vegetables. Yeah, you know with the cereal, my veterinarian, Dr. Loudis, told me that my birds could have. A few Cheerios as a treat sometimes and I, I mean I looked in there and there was actually a lot of salt 
um, in this in the uh, the Cheerios, right? So sometimes you know if you want a treat that's not so bad of a treat, it's way better than a chip. You could do cereal, but you don't want to do cereal that has a bunch of sugar and a bunch of salt. So it's it's tough to find that because I've looked and then. They do add a lot of extra vitamins to the cereals, and this is important that you know this. They add extra zinc and all kinds of stuff in there, and which is not good for them, but it's good for us. So you don't want to OD your parrot on human um, vitamins that are added into food. And so that's another thing that happens a lot with human food. They add extra vitamins into our diet because they think we're not gonna take vitamins or something, I don't know. And so these guys are totally different and they, they don't need that. Like they can get the vitamins from like fresh stuff, right? And like vitamin A. Um, the picture of in mostly South, um, vitamin A, like sweet potatoes, like they had sweet potatoes, that's loaded with vitamin A, which is really good for their immune system. So I try to give them vitamin A. Um, we're going to be heading into cantaloupe season. Um, that's actually a really, that melons are great. Everything in moderation, of course, but cantaloupes are full of vitamin A. And that's what you want to definitely give your birds, especially this time of year when they're stressed with hormones. Um, Vitamin A is amazing, and also vitamin C. You know, I do have some people ask me. It's okay. I do have some people ask me if it's okay to give their birds juice. So here's the thing with juice, you guys. It's best to let them get it naturally from an orange, but um, still... Uh, you know, a, a little slice of orange is a big slice to them, and that's a lot of sugar. So this time of year, you want to really be careful with the sugar intake with, like, half of a grape. You know, ease up on the berries, but blueberries are pretty good. You know, blueberries are probably one of the better berries out of all of them. Um, so you just really got to pay attention um, when it comes to that stuff. Huh, Thomas? But juice once in a while for a taste but giving your birds juice every day now that's a problem that's a problem right yeah it's just too much sugar for them and it's like giving a kid like let, giving them a cup of sugar they're gonna it's gonna be pretty wild it's gonna be pretty wild so yeah it's really a time of year to really start thinking about what you feed your birds and it's a wonderful time to have a food journal for them and also a journal that you know, you can put their weight, document their weight, the behavior in there, um, all kinds of stuff. I got bit today, you know, write that down. And then next year, you know, when you start entering that month, when your bird turned into, you know, a dinosaur, you'll look at your journal and go, oh, I know it's about to happen. So you can prepare, right? You can prepare and know to keep your bird off of your shoulder. Mm, don't do this because they can bite your face. And I know a lot of you think that you've got a bird. I mean, so do I, Victoria Cockatoo, right? Like, I don't think she would ever bite me. Would you ever bite me? I mean, she's a wild animal. You, you know, there's no such thing as never with a parrot. Um, Puffy, I don't know if you can see my scar. He bit through my lip a couple years ago, all the way through. And uh, he got me really bad, and it was my fault. And so I was like, he was looking so sweet, and I was just like, oh, it was such a moment. And I was just cuddling, you know, not, I don't want to say cuddling, but I was like petting him. And then I went for a kiss, which, you know, my bad, and he gave me a big kiss, and he didn't want to let go. Like, he, whoa. I remember that it's that moment. How many of you had it where you got bit on your face? And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to look in the mirror because there's like blood everywhere. You're thinking, what is, what is my lip still there? It's that look where you got to look in the mirror, you're just like trying to see what's left, right? So, um, and then, I, I'm not laughing about this. And then there was a, there's a, um, a gal on Instagram with her parrot. She's well known. And 
she just got bit on her nose. Like her bird, she wasn't doing anything wrong, really. Um, but her bird flew across the room and hooked on her nose and ripped all the way through, all the way through. And she put it on Instagram so everybody could see, um, you know, this is what can happen. And this was like her, it's her baby. So, and she did put, it's not his fault, you know, and it, it's so true. So I really appreciated she did that. Um, okay, so we've got fumes. Okay, yeah, so, you know, a lot, it's really interesting with fumes because you don't always smell fumes. And, okay, so I am still trying to figure this um, thing out, but what's so cool about this thing, I don't think it's charged. It's not charged. So this is a temp, this is a temp top. Oh, it is. So what it does is it measures the uh, Teflon in the room. It measures carbon dioxide in the room. It measures all kinds of different levels in the room. And it tells you if the room is safe for the bird. So I actually had, ah, I actually had an oil heater and oil heaters are usually safe, but what the companies do before they ship them, they put oil and stuff, they coat it on the outside so they don't get damaged in the shipping and that's bad. So what I was doing was I ran that thing in another room on high. It took me a week before it was safe. It would have killed them if I would have brought it in this room. So it's this guy and I'm still learning how to use it. I was like Googling like the safe, like, oh, the Teflon and this and that. When I was doing the heater, I was like, oh my God, I, I would have killed my birds for sure. I would have killed them. Um, and so this is also good if you have car new carpet in your house, if you're getting new flooring put in your house, you got a new oven in your house. Um, I think everybody needs these. And I think there needs to be a YouTube video how to use this thing. Cause like, it's like, I'm like always just like, I have to Google each thing on it. So I can't, when I know, when I, I'm going to make a video on it once I get a bit more educated, but if you guys want to beat me to it, it's called a temp top and you can get it at Amazon. My friend Suzette got this for me actually. It's a model M10 and it's a temp top, T-E-M-T-O-P. And you just basically charge it and you see where it takes in all the toxins and you can measure all the bad stuff in your house that'll kill your parrot and you'll be shocked and it's also good for you too so these things are a lifesaver right there because you don't always smell toxic fumes a lot of oh oh ah i thought i thought jesse was on um puffy's cage and that would be a for sure fight. Like Puffy would go for his feet to Puffy and it would be a disaster. Oh my gosh. Well, somebody would lose a toe. That scared, scared me. My, that's why I have to wear this thing a lot because my neck, I'll like injure it worse if I do a quick with these birds. Woo! Okay. Can taking a parrot on a tractor ride or a uh, motorcycle ride be deadly for them? Um... That's a good question. So I don't know if you guys watched, um, I don't know if you guys watched all the baby's birthday parties, but I actually would take him on a Ferris wheel and we would ride the go-karts, right? And we, it was an amusement park and baby, every year we do that, except this last year with COVID, they had to close permanently, which is really sad. And, um, so the problem with the go-kart is, and, and I'm assuming it's going to be the same with the tractor and a sa the same with, what was your other, a motor yeah, motorcycle. They release a lot of um, carbon dioxide into the air. And even if you're um, moving, it's strong. And the other thing is, you know, I wouldn't want to have a bird on a motorcycle. Um, for many reasons because it takes concentration or even a bird loose in a car when i travel with my birds in a car they're always in a carrier because anything can happen like you guys my family knows what can happen 
um, my stepdad was killed and my grandfather two years ago because of a wrong way driver. So let me tell you, my family knows that things, that accidents happen in a car. And that so much wasn't an accident that happened. Um, it should never have happened. So I would definitely not do that with a motorcycle. Tractor, I don't know. I, I just, uh, it scares me, it scares me. But I'll tell you one thing that I saw, but I do like that you're finding creative ways to spend time with your bird. That's awesome. Um, but what I did see was a TikTok of a person that had her parrot and her cat in her car with her sunroof open. The bird had no harness. She, this was on a TikTok, and people were sharing this on Instagram. I mean, what? That is like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And this is this person calls herself a parrot influencer. I mean, what a selfish, selfish person that is. So she can get a video, her little TikTok. I mean, I, I was so pissed. And I didn't, even, you know, I didn't comment, but I, I mean, it, it, it was so sad. Here you got that poor bird holding on to dear life. She has the windows rolled down, sunroof up, cat right here. I mean, what a mess. I mean, I, I just hope that she doesn't have children because she has no common sense on top of being 100% selfish, right? And she's operating a car, putting other people's lives in danger. If that is not the most selfish thing that you've ever seen, I don't know what it is. She's selfish. That is selfish and stupid. So I feel so sorry for her animals. And I hope she doesn't have children. Because, my God, that would be terrible. It's no bueno. Okay, so, damn, I have, oh, somebody said I have so many questions. Okay, le let me have it. I let my quail out yesterday. She was having fun. That's good. That's good. I love that. Quails are so cute. Um, Doris, thanks. But how do I cut from them eating it? She only likes uh, the bit of fruits and veggies. Uh, Dimesh, maybe you could try. Oh, there's a, there's questions going on. Make oh bread. Regular human bread can be bad for parrots. Christine's Chop Shop has really good bread. Um, Harrison's also has bread. And uh, who else makes bread? There are a lot of bird companies that make bread and that's a really good idea, oh darling. You can add the powdered pellets in the bread. You can add veggies in the bread. And bread is a really good way to get, um, hide healthy food and get it in those beaks so yeah bread's always a great idea and you can make it like cute little designs you can cut it up like little sticks so they can hold on to it sometimes the shape of what you're feeding the bird is everything some birds like to hold on to it some birds like little pieces some birds like big pieces so kind of figure out what your bird likes okay um, what is the latest update on Cameron? Well, I'm glad you asked that. So I uploaded uh, Cameron's video today, an update. She's not doing good, you guys. Um, the first part of the video, she's thanking everybody. And you can just hear in her voice, she just sounds so... It's just... She sounds... Uh, it's just not good. Like, she can barely talk. And so she, for those of you who don't know, she's the mother of... 11 rescue birds that, you know, we've been fundraising for. They were almost out of food. She lost her job and she's gotten COVID for the second time. And so she's re really sick and no health care, like really sick. So, you know, everybody sent a bunch of food and stuff, but she couldn't even open up the packages. Like she couldn't even get, get it all out of the boxes. That's how sick she is. So her daughter lives an hour and a half away. So um, she has been helping. Okay, so yes, thank you. And definitely watch that video. It's going to be after this. It'll be the next one under. And you guys, sometimes I don't know when I'm going to go live. So if you haven't already subscribed and you want to, um, definitely subscribe and hit the no notification bell, that little bell thing. Because if you don't, you won't know when I upload, when I go live. And that way you'll see it, right? Yeah. And then if you like this video, um, 
give this a like if you like this video. If you don't like this video, don't like it. But it actually helps us out. It, it helps us out, and I really appreciate that. So, oh, look who's here. Sherry is here. Do you hear that, Sherry? You see why I made that title? Sherry from Parrot Town is here. TV for birds. But uh, so Sherry has a YouTube channel called Parrot Town, and she has Parrot TV, and it's awesome. So she has different types of music, has her birds. It's live, so it's it's like you're seeing it. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous, and when people see, I, I think it's very relaxing. Even if you don't have a bird to watch, and it's great for your birds to watch as well, especially those birds that are insecure and shy. And a lot of us are going back to work. We're going back to work right now because a lot of things are opening up. I'm competing with him. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but we're like screaming right now, so I got to. I, I, I would not I just be quiet and calm, and he would stop. But he's, he's competing with me. But with a lot of people going back, and I wanted to talk about this, to work, the ones that aren't, aren't calling me and asking me, hey, I want to get rid of my bird now, that I've had my bird for a year, that I went out and bought a bird, now i got to go back to work and I'm done. You won't believe how many people are doing that. Um, and But the ones that are don't want to have their birds alone, turn on TV for birds, so you'll love it. And actually, her link is in the description below. So scroll down and you'll see it. All right, so some, I can't see what's going on over here. Let me get, I can't, wait, wait a minute. What's happening? Wait, hold on. No, what's going on? This neck brace has to go. Okay, my auntie taught me some tips, but to be honest, I don't trust her. Oh, some tips on what? We would love to hear it. I have, I have a great parrot channel. Is this Lady April? Oh, hi, great parrot channel. Oh, hello, Gina. How are you? Thank you so much. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. I'm sorry it's so loud, you guys, but then I'm not because I'm so glad that you can hear what it's like having a parrot, right? It's muy bueno. Ooh, muy bueno. It's, you know... I think you guys don't get to see what it really is like, right? Because there's a lot of YouTube videos and you don't see the true, you know, like this. I mean, here I am trying to concentrate. They're screaming. I mean, you see the stress and it's, 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 you know, this is what it is. And they're full. They ate. And Victoria is telling me that she's probably getting ready for bed. Okay. Hi, April. You are doing great. Um, work and have such a good heart. God bless you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gina. Okay, oh, so here's oh, darling. My teal is sleeping right now, and seeing this live is making me want to hang out with him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He wants to be part of the conversation. Uh, put her on the camera. I know. Wouldn't that be cool if this was like a Zoom? Where, like, people could take turns and it, I could, like, talk to them and we could, like, see each other. That would be so cool. Instagram does that. I love that feature. Like, one person at a time, you, you can, like, talk to your audience. It's really cool. Okay. Uh, Soto. Oh, Soto's here. Is Soto here? Are you here, Soto? Um, is Soto here? Let's see. I, okay, how's the diet? Should be around 7% pellets, 20% fruits and veggies, and 10 nuts. Yes. Is Soto here? So Soto rescued uh, a cockatoo from a basement. And I'm, I'm scrolling in because I want to see if she's here. And so I've been, I sent some food over there and some toys. And uh, the cockatoo is a mutilator. The poor leg just totally mutilated. And so this nice family is trying to help this cockatoo. And um, they live back east. And so we were helping them. I was helping them find a, an avian vet, which was really hard, actually. Oh, feather flax here. Yay. And so I'm just wondering if she's here right now. They're amazing people. Just so amazing. I just, I just love people 
that see something and they know it's not right and they they take action and then they bring it they bring that animal home and they try to make things right and so they've been educating themselves like crazy like unbelievable i love that Okay, I had parrots for 24 years, volunteered at Foster Parrots for eight years. I, I saw your comment earlier that um, you were going to finally start um, posting with your real name. That is so cool. And you know, Foster Parrots is amazing what they do. Did you say they had 400 parrots? They have a lot of parrots, I know. Um, and then hold on, a uh, Feathered Flock is here. So Feathered Flock has uh, a YouTube channel as well, right? She has the little birds. She has a cute little YouTube channel, so she's here right now. Oh, did somebody give me a super chat? Sorry, you guys. It is like, oh, yeah. Ah, uh, Sherry. <laughs> Look at the little um, thing that she put up there. It's so funny. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Bueno. It's bueno. It's bueno. You're so funny. You know that would make me laugh. She is like, she always knows the funny emojis. Who's the duck that quacking? It's Quinn. It's Quinn. He is... He thinks, well, he, it's more of a, a crow sound. It's more of a crow sound. So what I'm going to do is, Jesse, Jesse's been really quiet today. So with Jesse, this is my first year with him during this time of year. So there's a lot I don't know about Jesse. And, but what I'm noticing is when he is hormonal, he's actually quiet, unlike these other birds. He's very quiet. See him? And he's very observant, but he goes through a lot of wood and he eats a lot of food. Yeah, might have to go on a diet. So Jesse's gonna take over the live stream just for a moment so I can put uh, Victoria in her cage because I think she wants to go to her cage. So just hold on, Jesse. Can you... um? Can you entertain them for a second for me? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, you're such a good boy. Good boy. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Bird. Bum, bum, bum. Whoa, yes. Isn't Jesse handsome? Bum, 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 What's that? What's that on the ground? Oh, did you poop? We haven't gone through our, our poop thing yet. What? Clean up the poop? Okay, let's clean it up. Ugh, it's so gross. See that? That's gross. That's gross. Ugh, look at that. Did you do that? Ugh. Let's clean up some more. Gross. So gross. Ooh, that's disgusting. Yeah. You say he's so funny. He is so funny. Okay, so let me see. So Jesse, he's such a good boy, but he will sometimes bite me. Hi, baby. Mm, it smells so good. He'll sometimes bite me when the, the phone is right there, right? He gets like, he gets real, that's his only thing. He bites with the phone or the camera. And that is the only thing that he does. The only thing. Really, you know. But let me see if he'll come with me. I know the camera's there, but they step up. Do you want to step up? Yeah? Okay. So he wants to step up. But he might bite me, so I'm warning you because he sees the camera, but we're working on it. I mean, can you imagine? He's with the YouTuber and uh, he gets text. Are you laughing? You think that's funny? You think that's funny? Huh? <laughs> oh, you're so funny. You're so funny. Oh, boom, 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 boom. A boom, 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 boom. A boom, 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 boom. You're just so cute. I can't move my neck. You're so funny. 
Are you a good boy? Woo! So, so tomorrow, what? So tomorrow, Jesse is saying his last farewell. He doesn't know what to his previous owner, Jody. It'll be the last time they see each other from what we think. And so I'm like really sad about that. She's been visiting him regularly um, since I adopted him. And so she's been coming over for a while now, but now she's moving. So she has to move to Illinois to be with her family because her husband passed away. That was the reason why Jesse's here. And she decided that she's all alone here and she wants to be with her family. So she's moving. And she's going to come and say goodbye to him. And it's going to be so sad. So, um, but we're going to uh, do FaceTime. So he's going to still talk to her. So we're going to practice this tomorrow. And so he understands that's her on the screen. So gosh, I hope, I hope he can get like used to the phone, right? He's, you're going to need to. Do you want me to get you your own iPad? Do you want an iPad? So you can talk to Jody, Huh? And she can dial you up whenever she wants on the iPad. Yeah? Yeah, parrots are so smart. I know, it's so sad. Because he loves her so much. Like, when he sees her, he just melts. You know, he melts. He just, like, holds on to her. I mean, he loves her. I'm so glad that we could do this, an open adoption. You know, I love open adoptions as long as... As the birds came from a good home, right? As long as they came from a good home, I have no problem with an open adoption. Ever. Yeah? Yeah. Such a good boy. Yeah, but she's been so wonderful. Okay, you should not advise people to ignite what their vets have. Okay, so what's going on here? Do we have... You don't think parrots don't eat fruit in the wild? Okay, what is happening... Okay, I, I think I'm missing a lot what's happening on the screen. Oh, look at Jesse. Jesse's gonna yawn. Sarah goes, birds smell so good. I swear sometimes I think my parrots think I'm crazy when I sniff my birds. They do, and Jesse has such a good smell about him. He smells really good. He smells so good, don't you? you want some of that? Yum. He loves sweet potato. Is that good? Yeah, he's like, give me some food. Give me some food. Okay, let me see what's going on here. Okay, so feather flock. After my budgies eat their chop, they smell so good. I know. I know, right? So good. Lots of vitamin A. Grays need a lot. Yes, they do. Yeah, and then he's getting, um, there's quinoa in there, so he's getting calcium as well. And today, he was outside most of the day in the sun. So I made it so he could have a choice if he wanted to be in the sun or not, because that's important, not to have him in direct sun. And also, when you partly cover their cage or their aviary, it makes them feel more secure. Because, you know, parrots are um, prey animals and predators are always out there. And, and birds, even if they were never in the wild, they, this is instinct. Like bunnies, like rabbits. Do you know how bunnies are always kind of skittish and scared? Quinn, um, birds are as too, but they hide it because they don't want to look weak because a weak a weak bird in the wild is super vulnerable. So that's why it's good to like cover part of it. And I always, you know, I have my birds inside. They have an aviary, but there's also netting above it. And especially this time of year, the hawks are like hunting because they have their fledglings. This is when it's so dangerous. I've known a couple of people that have gotten their birds grabbed through um, the aviary. So it's important to have a second line of protection. Okay, so let's see, so to Bob, the vet only says she needs more people around her. Okay, um, uh, uh, Sourcy, what is the question? Because you guys, this is a really 
complicated situation with Ruby, the cockatoo. I just saw you there, Sorcy. I was like, where is she? Um, there's a lot to it with what's going on. And they worked so hard to find a vet and there were no vets that would see Ruby in the area where they live. And the vet that finally saw Ruby took advantage of them. This vet took advantage of them. And so they've been taken advantage by veterinarians out there more than once. So um, I'm not sure what the question is, but um, some of the stuff, what's going on, they're getting different answers. And so that's why I took over this a bit. And so what I'll do is, um, okay, um, uh, uh, Sorcy, what we need to do, you and I, ask your son, um, Ronald, to show you how to message me on my personal Facebook page. Because with that, I can talk to you because it has where I can talk instead of typing. I'm terrible at typing, terrible at typing. That way you and I can like really talk to each other about what to do with Ruby. And cause, um, cause I want to help you. And I, I sent those toys out there and I sent the food out there to you. And then that way I can also talk to you how to use it and everything. Cause you guys are just, I so appreciate what you're doing for Ruby. It's just amazing. And you, you rescue her and like just everything. And you got her the collar. And I, let me tell you. I feel bad for birds that have to wear, she's still biting herself, even with the collar that you got. Quinn, she's like bad. Okay, so let's, let's you and I talk about this. Um, let's talk about this tonight, okay? After this, um, I, I'm gonna, I need to upload Messenger onto this phone. Let's talk about this on Messenger. And then let's see what we can do, okay? Let's see what we can do. Because uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that's still happening. Mutilating is so hard to stop. But we will do our best. Get rid of the dandruff or whatever it is that falls from they scratch themselves. E you, you mean the pin feathers? Uh, the pin feathers of the bird, the, that, that dandruff. Um, okay, so that's not dandruff, uh, that's keratin. And so it's basically made out of the same um, material that our nails are made out of. And so no, you'll never get rid of that because if you do, uh, you've got a very sick bird. And so that's, that's called, uh, that's like dust, uh, feather dust, right? And hold on, let me go get Victoria. You're so, you're so handsome. Let me let me talk to you a little bit about feather dust, okay? And I'm gonna show you with Victoria, and I'll show you uh, the dandruff that you're talking about, and 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 that's a uh, feather dust. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right. Okay. So. When you have a parrot, you've got pin feathers. You see, and the pin feathers, some of them have blood in them, so that's called a blood feather. And that's how the feather forms, and it's hard to see it. I have a whole video on this. And so what you do is, as it starts to form and as it turns white, that's when you can kind of start helping your bird out if they want. And you take a little bit of the powder. She has none right now. But do you see? Do you see that powder on there? That means she's really healthy. But that's what helps your parrot to form. That's keratin. Um, they're feathers. And it just goes through a series. It's kind of like a flower or a caterpillar, really. It starts to develop and then it just blossoms into a beautiful butterfly. But there are people that are allergic to that and there are people that can become allergic to that. So to prevent that, um, I don't usually let my birds hang out in my bed because that's where I sleep. And so you want to give your lungs a break. You also want to have 
a air cleaner. I have one down here. Air cleaner. You said that? I change out the filters regularly. And then you want to wear a mask when you're cleaning their cages because that's when a lot of the dander flies. And you can spray it with water, the paper, and that will prevent the dander flying up and you can just roll up your paper. So yeah, so that's not dandruff. That's uh, it looks like it though, right? Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Oh, Miki Mikio is allergic. I've got a question. My birds have been tail bobbing for a while. It's speed is different every day. Is there any way to take care of it from home? I heard it can be a lack of vitamin A. Uh, I would definitely take your bird to a vet because tail bobbing can be a number of things. Your bird can be having a hard time breathing. So they're basically made out of air sacs. And there are air sacs down. Oh, I won't show you my butt. Sorry, I was gonna like show you my butt. <laughs> Look what the heck. There's let me show you Jesse's butt. I'm um, sorry, sorry. Oh my god. Um, so birds have air sacs all around them. They're like the little bubble boy. And when they're having troubles breathing, they'll, they'll bob their tail. Some will lift their wings to make more room. Or, because it's nesting season, this is concerning me. They can also be doing that when they're egg bound, trying to push an egg. They can also be doing that possibly from hormones. There's really a million reasons why a bird could be doing that. But that right there is very scary. It's very serious. It, I would definitely take my bird to the vet like now. Um, I, I wouldn't wait, sad to say, on that one. But it's good you brought it up. But yeah, I mean, I hope it's nothing, but what happens if it's something, right? So that's a tough one. You probably should go to the vet. <laughs> Gotta go. See you later, Sherry. Well, it is been like an hour, you guys. And I think it is time to go. My birds. Oh, somebody has two. Uh, uh, Christy has two air purifiers. Air purifiers. I think it's time. Cause my, can you tell that my birds are ready for bed? Yeah. So if you guys haven't already watched Cameron's new video, definitely go check it out. Thank you so much for coming on here and visiting us. We love you. And then I am going to get on my messenger and talk uh, about Ruby. Okay, took them to a vet a while ago and they gave me medicine for the respiratory infection and held them back. So it could be another respiratory infection as well, right? Because when they're tail bobbing, that, that tells me they're having a hard time breathing or it's a egg bound. I mean, I don't know if they're still, your bird's still pooping. Um, yeah, I would definitely, because by the time you see that your bird's doing uh, something different like that or showing signs of illness, it means they've been sick for a while because they hide their illnesses. So I would definitely not wait. I mean, really don't wait. That could be, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. I wish you all the best. Okay, guys. Well, hi, hi, Santa. We're going to get going. Okay, good. So, Sorcy's going to call me. Get, give me, Sorcy, get, give me like, well, you're in Georgia, so it's late over there. Give me like uh, 20 minutes to get this troop in line and I'll be on the internet. Okay. We love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.